Hey guys, it's Tiny Sim Builds here, and I'm finally back with another build. First off, a very happy Halloween to all of you guys. We did make it through a whole month of spooky builds. Now today's build is special for Halloween, so we are taking it back to the world of Glimmerbrook. And lo and behold, I decided to create an occult strip mall. So this mall features a lot of objects from Realm of Magic along with the Paranormal Stuff Pack to offer your spellcasters a cooler, more interactive experience. So without further ado, let's head on over to the world of Glimmerbrook and check out the lot. Alright guys, and here we are with a full view of the magical occult strip mall. Like I said, we are in fact in the world of Glimmerbrook, and the lot we're looking at is actually the lot where the original bar slash tavern was, which came with the world itself. Now, I don't know if you guys have explored this world too much, but when I first saw this bar, I was really underwhelmed. I didn't really think it fit well with the whole magic theme. So when I started bulldozing this lot and building upon it, I really wanted to create something unique. I did do a mall in the past, but I really wanted to create a more dynamic experience for your witches and warlocks. So if you guys didn't really like the bar, if you guys didn't like the whole shop experience in the spellcasters realm, hopefully this lot is more exciting for you. Now being a strip mall, it does contain five shoppable stores, and it does have a few community spaces inside as well. What we're looking at is just the outside with the courtyard area, so it's a great place to meet other spellcasters, maybe play a round of chess, or even pick up a quick bite from the vending machines. Now this little area is divided into two floors, so we have some stores downstairs and some on top as well. And looking out, we will check out the lot in different forms of lighting. This is the night view, followed by the morning view, onto the afternoon, taking it to the evening, and finally back to the night for a nighttime tour where we will take a look inside. So starting off with the first floor, we do have quite a bit to cover, but we will start with the very front of the strip mall. So our first store is actually a fashion boutique for your spellcasters. We do have quite a bit of options. All of the mannequins are wearing um, outfits seen from the Realm of Magic pack. So we do have more male masculine styles towards the back and towards the front we have styles that are more for female or feminine fashion choices. So it is pretty cool. I definitely saw a lot of the townies kind of popping in and trying on the clothes themselves. And because this design does use get together, we do have the get together closet there in the corner. So pretty neat little shop. It's definitely fun seeing it in action. But moving forward, we do go through the main entrance with the two ravens on either side. As you guys can see, I did squeeze in some vending machines. I figured that, you know, if your sims get a little peckish, they can definitely grab a pretty quick bite to eat. Looking over here, this is the dark or black magic shop. Now, if you guys are fans of Harry Potter and you are familiar with Nocturne Alley, this was definitely the inspiration behind this. This particular shop has a lot of buyable items from both Realm of Magic and also the Paranormal Stuff Pack. So you have a lot of creepy stuff, you have some voodoo dolls, you have some evil cursed dolls inside the little cabinet of curiosities. And I included some familiars on the fireplace as well. So you do have like a skull familiar and a raven familiar, I think. And of course, over here is the checkout desk featuring the portrait from the Paranormal Stuff Pack. Zooming back out, we're making it to the courtyard area. And like I said, this is a really cool spot if you wanna be social with other spellcasters, or if you just wanna chill out, play chess, grab a bite. Um, it's definitely the place to do just that. This does also work pretty nicely with a little cafe, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Moving over, we do enter the back staircase that leads towards the second floor, but we do have a little public restroom there as well. As I always say, I divide this into a male and female bathroom, but if you want a more gender neutral option, please feel free to change the doors accordingly to fit your game. So this is just a quick view. The bathrooms are also conveniently located next to the other entrance. I think this is the smaller west entrance to the plaza. But moving over here, we do have our final shop on the first floor, which is a spellcaster supply shop. I'm gonna call it that. Um, it originally started as a bookstore, but I figured that I needed more magical items inside. 
So we do have quite a bit of stuff here. We do have some really cool brooms that your witches and wizards can purchase. Uh, we do have a ton of books. Perhaps they could be tomes or spell books, if you will. We do have two corners featuring different wands you can purchase. And of course, the two cabinets of curiosities containing more familiars that are available for purchase. So it's a pretty cool little shop. It's definitely very fun seeing a lot of the townsfolk shop here. And yeah, I just thought it was pretty fitting for the lot itself. Moving on up to the second floor, we still have some very interesting spaces still left. And starting us off is in fact the cafe that I mentioned earlier. So the reason why I included this cafe was I truly wanted a space that was more communal, that wasn't necessarily a retail space. So this area does serve as a pseudo coffee shop, if you will. So you can grab a cappuccino, you can grab some dessert, you can hang out in the nice comfy sitting area, maybe even grab a book from that one lonely bookshelf, or if you want to write or program, you can do so on the computers in the dormers themselves. So hopefully it's a nice little break from the other stores and offer something else for your spellcaster sims. But moving on, we do have another shop, and this is the white slash light magic store. And it is a direct counter to its counterpart at the bottom. So this store also features a lot of objects from both Realm of Magic and the Paranormal Stuff Pack. So unlike the other store, we do have some good dolls that can actually calm down your sim in a crisis. We have some dream catchers, we have some sacred candles, some African or native totems that can ward off spirits. And we do even have some familiars, and I believe they are like a frog and fairy familiar if I'm not mistaken. Here's just a view of the checkout counter. So pretty similar to the uh, Nocturne Alley type of shop downstairs, but they kind of create this really interesting yin and yang of each other, if that makes any sense. Moving towards the corner, we have a potion shop. So you can't actually buy potions in this particular store, but you can in fact shop for your favorite cauldron. I do have some other ingredients there as well. I think a lot of the items are actually base game. So we have a lot of collectibles. We have some of the antique scales that came with Realm of Magic. And of course, you guys can see the little limited selection of cauldrons that I could fit into the space. This is just a quick view of the checkout counter. It does have a little cow plant there. You guys are very familiar with that from this game. And I thought this one wall piece fit fairly well. It has a lot of information about crystals, which we do have in this store. Moving out, we are at the final place in the build, and this is probably one of my favorite shops, and this is actually a psychic shop. So this would be where you'd have your seances, where you could speak to a fortune teller, if you will. And I set this up kind of like a dentist office. It's a little weird, but we do have a place for a secretary who is keeping tabs on who has an appointment with the psychic or clairvoyant. We do have the waiting space right here as well. So pretty neat and tidy. But once you guys pass through the little archway with the curtains, we do in fact enter the true seance slash fortune telling room, whatever you guys want to make it. Now, because this would normally be a place to commune with the dead, we do have a lot of different antique portraits. These come from base game, uh, paranormal stuff, and of course, the get together pack. So I thought it was a pretty neat space. It's really um, something different for this occult strip mall. And as a final touch, I did create a little altar here in the dormer just to complete the spiritual essence of this room. So looking at the lot specs as a whole, this is in fact a 30 by 20 lot. So if you do want to replace that kind of bland bar slash tavern in Glimmerbrook, you can definitely do so with the slot. Now because it's also very small, it does in fact fit in a lot of other Sims 4 worlds if you'd like to place it elsewhere. The lot type is of course set to retail, given that there are many stores and shopping areas. And in terms of packs, we do use four packs this time. Obviously, we always use base game, but this mall also includes content from Get to Work, Get Together, Realm of Magic, and the Paranormal Stuff Pack. Alright guys, and that is a wrap on the Magical Occult Strip Mall. As always, you know I love hearing all of your thoughts and feedback on these lots, and I hope you guys have a very happy Halloween if you guys do celebrate it. Hopefully this was a really nice way to kind of culminate the season and get back to some very interesting community lot builds. If you guys haven't checked it out, my community tab is open, so feel free to place your vote on what I will build next. I do have a lot of really interesting ideas, including a whole world that is coming up towards the end of the month, and a new type of video you guys have never seen me do just yet. 
And with that, this has been Townie Sim Builds signing off. Thank you so much for watching, guys.